Thank you so much, Habibi Mohammed Jawad, for having me for this very important conversation. As we all know, Islam is a holistic way of life in the sense that it provides us with general guiding principles on how to go about our lives. And this is not peculiar to one particular phase of life. It cut across from birth to death. Whatever we do, Islam has something to say. Minimalism is not any exceptional. No doubt, Islam has something to say about it. And we have traces of discussions within the religion of Islam when it comes to minimalism. Because really, this is something that ought to be discussed. Because sometimes people will come forward and ask questions. Can I be minimalist or not? I said, of course. When we talk of minimalism, my dear brothers and sisters, it is really to try as much as we can to reclaim our precious times. Because you see, we often don't realize how we chase behind more. And doing so, what it does, it takes our valuable or precious times and this, in return, makes us less productive and less creative. And Islam, my dear brothers and sisters, is clear when it comes to this. Our beloved Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, beautifully mentioned, man radiya bil qalili istaghna. Whoever is pleased with the little, that person is rich in the sight of Almighty Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala. So when you talk of minimalism, it's really for one to strive in his or her own small way to create more and live with less. Because if you do not live with less, and you run behind more and more and more and more. By the time you realize, you will be consumed by more and nothing achieved in return. So Islam encourages us, even say, for instance, you have that more. Islam comes out in Quran where Allah says, Wala tubadhir tabdhira inna al mubadhirina kanu akhwana shayateen. Don't go about extravagantly. Because sometimes you see people who have more, they just throw it anyhow. They don't appreciate it. Islam says don't go about extravagantly because extravagance is associated with shaitan. So what if somebody wants to buy a nice extravagant car? They're able to afford to do that. Should they not buy that then? Thank you. It's a very good question. If one is able to afford, Islam does not say don't. What Islam says was the intention behind it. The intention is crucial, my dear brothers and sisters. Because at the end of the day, what Islam expects from us is to be modest. Do I want to have more because I want to fit in? Do I want to have more because I expect the instant gratification? Do I want to have more because at the mosque, at the Imam Barga, in the communities, everybody is driving Porsche? Oh no, I am able, I want to be a little bit of, I want to have a little bit of comfort so that I'm able to be productive and creative in whatever I do. Again, Islam comes forward and say, you want to have more? Fine. But make sure you take care of those who do not have. The bottom line is, brothers and sisters, whatever we have in life, we are having them as caretakers. That's the Islamic science. That's the Islamic teaching. Whatever you have, you are a caretaker. So if you are a caretaker and you recognize that, then you will know how to handle more. Look at Ahlul Bayt. When we mention Ahlul Bayt, 
Some may be sitting somewhere and say, no, their times are different from our times. Yes, time may be different, but values are not old. Values are not archaic. Values will remain to be there until the day of Qiyamah because the halal of Muhammad is halal until Qiyamah and the haram of Muhammad is haram until Qiyamah. They lived in modesty. They lived with very little. Typical example, we've just commemorated the life of Imam Hassan al-Askari alayhi salam. One of his beloved companions, Muhammad Shakiri, described the life of the father of my 12th Imam, your 12th Imam, our 12th Imam. That we would serve him with a lot, but he would eat little. And when we would ask him, why Imam? Then he would say to us, take the rest and give to those who are in need, especially your children. Yes, you can afford, I agree. But there are billions out there who do not have what to eat, who do not have what to drink. If you having that will make you humble, will connect you with Allah, it will make you invest your time properly. Why not? Again, we see and hear many people today, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, Shias and non-Shias alike, complaining about lack of time. That's where the importance of minimalism comes in. You want to have enough time on your plate, on your table, then seek to live with little. Living with little doesn't mean that you don't have. You may have, but you settle with less. So others can also have peace of what you have. So they will also have a little, and you will also have a little. My dear brothers and sisters, how do I develop minimalism? Because it's very important. Easier said than done. So we need some practical tips on how to go about it. Number one is your intention. Your niya. Why do I want to live with less? So the niya has to be, is to be able to have a quality in whatever I do. Quality is crucial. <laughs> I've seen people with lots and lots and lots, and there's no quality. And there's no quality even in the way they worship Allah and in the way they serve Al Bayt. So, niya is important. The second practical tip no hoarding. Get rid of what you have not used, and probably you are not going to use it. <laughs> Get rid of them. No hoarding. And there is prudential, you have teachings on this. Number three, my dear brothers and sisters, is what? Very, very important. Do away with duplicates. You have it. Why do you want more? How many you have in your house? Why do you want more? Get rid of excess. <laughs> Get rid of excess. It's of great importance. The next practical tip is what? Don't overload your tummy with a lot. <laughs> this is very, very important. And also, uh, travel simply. Don't get a lot of stuff you want to travel with. It. Travel simple. And then seek divine intervention. But remember, there are so many people out there who are struggling. Those excesses can go a long way in giving them the best life. That best life may not be like yours, but at least you will be listed amongst those who give life to others. Think about it. Reflect. And may God bless you. Assalamu alaikum.